Welcome to the video, everybody. We're here in the Weikert office here in Loudoun County, Virginia. Um, I've invited my mortgage advisor, Carol Souser, here. A few of you have reached out to me on social media and have been asking me a few different questions about mortgages. And I decided to have Carol come in. And luckily, she's uh, been able to take time out of her day to come in and answer a few questions regarding kind of different concepts and the various nuances regarding mortgages. So uh, I want to say thank you again. I appreciate you coming out to join us. Well, thank you, Lenny. Thank you for inviting me. It's my privilege uh, to be able to sit down with you and help answer some questions that some of you might have about mortgage, about how to get a mortgage. Okay. Um, and so I wanted to ask, do you have anything that you wanted to say about yourself? Well, you want to tell to the Absolutely. The yeah. I've been in the uh, mortgage industry pretty much uh, all of my professional life. And uh, joined, recently joined the Weikert Loudon office uh, yeah, roughly about six months ago. And uh, I, my expertise is in working with first-time homebuyers and first-time homebuyer programs. Okay. And hopefully I will be able to help answer your questions. And I'm also available if you ever want to reach out to me on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Okay. All right. Um, so did you just want to roll into the questions? Sure, and... sure. Just shoot. Um, whatever questions you might have. Okay, and so I was going to start with some of the more broad questions that a lot of people have been asking. I figured we can kind of answer a wide variety of everyone's questions. Sure. And then kind of go into the more specific ones that people have been asking, if that's okay. Sure, absolutely. Sure. Um, so one of the questions I get a lot is how long or short can a mortgage be and exactly what is a mortgage? Okay, well a mortgage is a loan that is secured by a piece of real estate and a buyer will find a home, make it a mortgage for it, a mortgage is paid back with interest for, for a certain amount of time, for a certain term, and the terms can vary anywhere from 10 years to 40 years, Okay. 30 being the most popular, and of course, you know, you think out a 30-year mortgage, uh, oftentimes if you decide you want to prepay, you know, pay a little extra towards principal, you can actually shorten the term of your mortgage. You know, if you make maybe one extra mortgage payment a year, that can shorten your mortgage anywhere from five to seven years. Okay, that's good to know. Yes. Um, and you said you meant you mentioned that you work a lot with first-time home buyers. Yes. What are some, I guess, great options that are available to different first-time home buyers? Some ideal programs for them. Oh, we have a lot of different programs. Um, we have FHA loan is a very uh, popular one, and if you are a veteran. Um, it's a way that you can get in on a VA loan with zero money down. Okay. And if you buy a property in Virginia, uh, we have a VHDA loan, which is Virginia Housing Development Authority. It's a bond loan. And the reason why I like this program a lot is because you have the opportunity to get grant money, which is essentially it's free money, which you can apply towards down payment. And you also uh, have the ability to get a very low payment second trust, which can also be applied towards a down payment and or closing costs. Okay. So VHD is another very good program. Uh, if you're buying something a little bit more remote, uh, you have USDA loans. So that one you can go in with zero money down. And Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac also offer uh, their first-time home buyer programs, which allows you to go in with 3% down and reduce mortgage insurance. Okay. Okay, that's great to know. And so as far as mortgage insurance goes, can you explain a little bit more about exactly what mortgage insurance is? Yes. Yes, absolutely. So mortgage insurance, uh, they have private mortgage insurance, which is uh, provided by a private company, or also government insured loans, so where the government provides the insurance. And what that does, it protects the lender. It's insurance that protects the lender against any costs for any default that a buyer might have towards the loan. Um, and this is really insurance that's applied for riskier loans. Uh, for less money down. So for instance, on conventional loans, if you're putting less than 20% down, that would require private mortgage insurance. Okay. Then FHA loans, uh, they, that's where you have government insured loans. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you for answering those. Of course. Um, and so now it's going to go into some of the more specific questions okay, that sure. people have been asking. Uh, so the first one that I wanted to ask is, what exactly, when you're looking for a lender, what is it that you should... I guess, keep an eye out for. Oh, what to look for in a good lender? In a good lender, okay. yeah. Well, from personal experience, um, I would think first of is you, first impressions uh, mean a lot. 
you're going to be working very closely with this lender from the very beginning all the way to closing. So you want to make sure you're taken care of. So you want to look at response time. Are they getting back to you in a timely fashion? You also want to find a lender that's going to honor the quote. Um, you want to find a lender that will be able to explain loan programs to you and explain options to you that best fits your needs. Okay. Okay, so whatever the situation is, uh, first time home buyer or whatnot. And you also want a lender that's going to explain timeline to you. You know, what to expect from the time you take application or the time you write a contract to the time that you go to close. Because there's a lot of different steps. So you need essentially to find a lender that's going to hold your hand from start to finish. Okay. And so what are some questions, I guess, when you do find that ideal lender? Mm -hmm. If you're a first time home buyer, what are some good questions that you should ask to kind of... Well, once you've told them a little bit about yourself, you want to ask me, what is the best program that best fits my needs? Okay. And you want to ask, you know, of course, um, what are the costs involved mm -hmm. in buying the home? And, you know, what, what do the payments look like? Uh, you need to know how much you can afford. Um, also ask... Um, so speaking of looking for a lender, mm -hmm. what are some good questions that a first-time home buyer should ask when they do find that ideal um, Lender, mortgage lender. Gotcha. Okay. Well, you, you, you should ask, uh, what is the best type of loan for you? Mm -hmm. you know, based on your needs and uh, your scenario, what is the best program that fits, best fits your needs? Okay. Um, what are the costs involved in getting this loan? Um, what are the monthly mortgage payments look like? Mm -hmm. What is the rate? What is the APR? Okay. And uh, is there any prepayment penalty? Do you understand what prepayment penalty means? Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna ask actually. Could you? I guess just help the audience just in case they don't understand. Sure, absolutely. For uh, APR and prepayment penalty. Okay, so prepayment penalty is if you, like it says prepay, whether it be in part or in full, mm -hmm. like let's say you want to make an extra lunch payment, or you won the lottery and you want to pay off your loan tomorrow, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that there's no penalty, that you can actually do that without getting penalized for it, having a fee for prepaying your loan. That's what prepayment penalty is. Okay. Okay. And APR is stands for uh, for annual percentage rate, which includes your interest on the property uh, on the loan, plus any fees that incur placed in the percentage format. Okay. 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 All right. Um, and actually, kind of backtracking just slightly, can you just explain a little bit more about what the total mortgage is composed of? Okay. Uh, total mortgage payment, you mean? Yes, so, yes. Okay. So your mortgage payment will consist of your principal, mm -hmm. interest, taxes, and insurance. What that stands for is principal is chipping away from the balance of the loan. Okay. Interest is, the interest is incurred for getting the loan. And then taxes and insurance, going that's money that they, they collect that goes into an escrow account to make sure there's always enough funds in the escrow account to pay for your insurance and tax bill that's due typically anywhere from once a year to twice a year. Okay. Could you just explain to any viewers who might, like, the basics of what an escrow account okay. might be? Absolutely. So an escrow account, when you first go to settlement, we have to build what you call an escrow account, mm -hmm. which is where we put money to pay for, your, and for, to pay for your taxes and your insurance. So in the very beginning, we collect a few months up front when we go to settlement, and then each month, as part of your mortgage payment, you're paying a twelfth of your insurance and tax bill. And all this money, again, goes into this account. And once a year, or twice a year, when we get our tax and insurance bill, mm -hmm. we take the funds out of that escrow account that we Okay. All right. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, now kind of going back, kind of jumping around here. Sure. Going back to the more specific questions. Uh -huh. um, so, one person asked, um, if a man were to buy a home and his girlfriend were to move in and be added to the title for the home, would she still be eligible for a first-time home buyer's mortgage if she were to purchase a home in the in the future? Most first-time home buyer programs will will not consider us, her as a first-time home buyer. Okay. Now let's say they sold the house and are back renting again and had not bought, purchased another home for three years. She will be eligible again for being a first time. Okay, so three years is the minimum kind of 
Yes, like two years. Okay, all right. It's great to know. Um, and so another question someone asked. Uh, they said their credit isn't very good at the moment and sits at a low 600. Mm -hmm. um, would it still be possible for them to purchase a home with that score? Well, FHA's minimum score is 580. Okay. Okay. But of course, the lower the score, the bigger the risk. So it's always good to, once again, like we talked previously, have them come to me and I can pull the credit. And if I can find ways to increase that credit score in a short period of time, I would advise so. That way you can get a better rate. And if your score is less than 580, let's find, a way, find ways to uh, increase it. And ideally, we'd like to get it over 640. Okay. All right. So the next question I wanted to ask, just overall, how does credit affect a potential buyer, maybe as far as interest rates or oh, anything it does. else that... Credit report plays a huge part in a buyer's uh, qualifications. Um, of course, the better the score, the higher the score, the lesser the risk for the, for the uh, lender, therefore you can get a better rate. Okay. And the lesser the uh, credit score or no credit score, worse, well, no credit score, it kind of get, you know, the rate might be higher and also uh, there are less programs available. There are more programs available if you have a better credit score. Okay. All right. And then, so the final question that I want to ask, and I think for a lot of people this is going to be just something good to keep in mind. How do, how will student loans affect pre-approval or the options with regards to finding a mortgage? Gotcha. Well, student loans, much like all other loans, we all monthly payment in your qualified and your qualifications and different programs calculate student loans the monthly student loan payments differently okay and rather than going through the entire calculation you know just come to me even if the loan is deferred we still have to count the monthly payments okay now the only other loan only loan I can think of where we don't have to count the first student loans if it's deferred for 12 months or more are VA loans okay for the veterans for the veterans out there okay all right that was that was pretty that was it. Awesome. Well thank you so much for inviting me to your video. Thank you for coming out and taking time out of your day to, oh, my, to answer some questions. My pleasure. And if any of you just want to call, consultation, just ask a question, I'm available. You can either call, email, text. Lenny's got all my contact information. Yes. It would be my pleasure to help each and every one of you. All right. Well thank you again for stopping by. And thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys got some information out of it. Um, yeah, as Carol said, feel free if you have any questions to stop by, see Carol. If you can't find Carol, come find me and I'll find Carol for you. Yes. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. Thank you. Happy New Year. <laughs>